What up, loungers? What's going on? All right, so as I told you in the last podcast and actually the YouTube video, I'm going to do some, like I said, I don't want to call them reaction videos, but I guess maybe they are. Who knows? Call them what they are. They're just videos. Here's what I'm going to do. So I've got a video pulled up, and I want to, we're going to go through it. It's me driving Code 3 through L.A. My partner was filming, and... I'm just going to go over how we drive. And I know most of my followers that I have right now on YouTube, you guys are all EMTs, paramedics, whatever. I think, I think, I'm pretty sure. But whatever. Anyways, here's the point. I'm going to go over this. We're going to review it. We're going to look at it. We're going to see what I did right, what I did wrong, and just critique it. And that's really all I want to do. So let's just get started. So this is going to be a drive through Huntington Park, California. It was a weekday, if I remember correctly. I never filmed. This is the only one I ever filmed, so I kind of remember the day. Uh, and this is just your typical average, everyday L.A. response. So see what happens here. Coming up to a light, and I remember this video pretty well. It's green. We're good. Next one's going to be red, though. Uh, the no other videos I'm going to do in the future won't be. But listen. Listen. Clear right. Clear right. So for those of you who aren't in EMS or run 911 or what have you, never ran uh, lights and sirens, my partner who's in the passenger seat or if I'm the passenger seat, in the passenger seat, we will clear that right side. And basically what that means is we're going to look to the right, make sure that it's clear for the driver to continue. Now, it's great if you trust your partner. The problem is, do you trust your partner? And I had a few partners that mm -hmm, I always was a little sketchy of. And so uh, this particular partner of mine was solid. He had worked that area for years, and he knew those streets like the back of his hands. But he knew to be safe. And the one thing I always told my partners, especially the new guys coming in, I said, look, you can clear my right. I'm okay with that. I like it. It helps me. But remember, if you clear that right side and we're not clear, you're the first person to get hit. And you're going to get hit hard. I'm probably going to be fine. You may not be. And so if you're that passenger and you're clearing that right side, be sure you are 100% clear. Uh, and uh, otherwise, you're, you know, you're the one that's going to get hit. and You're going to be feeling it. And so uh, the reason they do that is it allows a driver to continue focused forward and also look to his left without having to look to the right. When you look to that right, you're you, depending on where you're at in the intersection. You may not have a good visual. There's a mirror that gets in the way. There's his head that could be in the way. And so it just makes more sense for them to clear that side since they have that wide open view. Should be making a left-hand turn right here. That clicking you sound, that clicking sound you hear, that clicking you sound, that clicking sound you hear is actually the, what we called road safety, and it monitored how you were driving. And it could tell if you were braking too fast, you were accelerating or turning too hard, and it would set off tones. And we had several different tones, but mostly low and high. And if you got a high tone for every second you hit of a high tone, you had to drive one mile to erase it, basically. Uh, and I'm going to talk about my tones here a little later, but let's keep going. The, the idea is to keep tones off and just ride right at that limit. And you can hear them clicking. The faster they go, the closer they're getting to toning. For those of you who drove with care, you know what I'm talking about. You know how close I was right there to actually setting tones. So right here, we're going to just quickly... Opposed traffic on the opposite side. We're going to run this sidewalk or this crosswalk rather. Uh, we know it's clear. We could see it was clear. And this particular street, the way it's set up, man, that siren just reverberates off of those buildings. And everybody knew we were coming. Like there's no doubt we were coming down the street. And so, uh, you know, good scanning, good looking, keeping ahead, watching what's happening. We're fine. All right. Red light. Here we go. Should clear. Oh, no, it went green. Cool. This guy right here actually pulled over and stopped, which is what you're supposed to do. Thankfully. Red light again. This is not an intersection. It's just a sidewalk. Now, right here, we're going to oppose. And if you look, we're going to pause this here for one second. If you look, there's nowhere for me to go. 
zero. Every lane is blocked. The turn lane is blocked, and I have nowhere to go. Uh, again, uh, I don't think my partner clears my right side on this, and that's okay. Uh, I, I don't remember exactly why we were, why he didn't. I don't know if he just felt safe. I don't remember. Uh, but if you notice, coming up here, I'm going to find a spot we can get through. It's small, but we get through it. Fortunately, this guy in the front there left me some room. We were able to squeak around. There's that tone I was talking about. All right, let's back it up for a sec. You can hear it right here. It's that high-pitched tone. Oh, didn't go far enough. Let's try that again. This thing's a little slow backing up. About as slow as it is when you really back up. But here's your tone. That high pitch. So I had a couple miles. I'd drive off there. Again, we're going to cut through traffic. We're going to oppose. Now, uh, company policy stated that I stayed under 15 miles an hour. We're not going to do that here. Uh, in, in all reality, look, you got to be safe in what you're doing. And, and I felt I was safe. My partner felt I was safe. There's no oncoming traffic. Even if the cars were backing out from the left-hand side over here, we would be fine. And there would be plenty of room and plenty of time for me to stop. There's plenty of open area I can ditch my rig into and be completely safe. And so, yes, we're going to oppose faster than 15 for those of you that know the policy within that ambulance company, and that's fine. Uh, again, blast through that it's like crosswalk and we're still opposing and we're doing probably 25 we're not too far over but we are but here we go he's going to clear that right side again now let me back up just one second i want you to see this this car right here in the front could be turning left now granted he's unprotected left but nonetheless he could move and you've got to expect that when you're driving with lights and sirens people do some weird stuff and you're going to see in a minute where People do some weird stuff. And so with that, he's still going to clear my right side. Granted, the whole, we're turning right. He knows we're turning right. He knows exactly where we're going. If you heard at the beginning, he said, are you going to map it? And I, the reason being is just make sure we know where we're going, right? But he knows where we're going already. He's also watching GPS, but he knows this area. And so when we make that right turn, we don't want traffic to pull out. Right. And so even though we're turning right into into the flow of traffic, we still want to make sure everybody stopped. And that's a that's what is a good partner right there. And listen, you'll hear him. Clear right. Clear right. Turn the corner immediately hit. This is a main thoroughfare. This is um, Florence Avenue. Alameda. And we're headed to Alameda, Alameda. Boulevard. So my GPS was getting screwed up. So you can see right here, st traffic starting to back up. St it's starting to jam me up. Uh, this is what I loved. I love this part of, of driving. I love this part of the job. I love trying to get through traffic with never having to turn off my lights and never having to shut down my siren. I wanted to continuously, we used to play games. I can't really call it a game. We would always have a competition who can drive the furthest without having to shut down. And that's hard to do on every single run in L.A. in this area. So, again, right here, we have really no place to, to go. This car here on the right, he's blocking me. Again, didn't pull to the right. He just stopped. The Fortunately, there's a van here. He's pulling to the right, and it's going to open me up a little bit of room. The biggest issue is is behind this pickup truck, and I don't know if there is a vehicle there. Uh, looking at the video now, I can actually tell there is a vehicle or it appears to be maybe a vehicle because there's a shadow behind the truck. Uh, but I'm going to make a split decision. And, and, and this is that part where people like to critique because you could say, don't go. It's a go, no go situation. I'm going to either go go or not go. And that means oppose. Knowing your area is important though, because what you don't see, let me see. I'm going to, I'm going to keep my mouth shut for that for a sec. Cause I want to see if this is where I'm at. Yeah. Nope, I did cut right. That's right. I'm sorry. It's been a while since I've seen the video. Again, more traffic backing up. Uh, and this is where it's going to get tricky. So you could could pull to the right, meaning as a driver, you can go into that right lane. The problem with that is if those two cars decide that now's the time they want to pull to the right, if they do and they hit you, it is your fault as a driver. Because you are not to travel in that lane with your lights and sirens on. And so 
What's your decision here? What would you guys think? Leave me a comment below. Tell me what you think you would do in this situation if these two cars are in your way. Do you A, shut down and wait? Do you shut down, pull to the right? Because you can do that too. You could just shut off and pull into that right lane. And then if they pull over and hit you, it's their fault. Or do you do what I'm about to do? High tone again. So I pushed him out of the way. And if you notice, I'm kind of moving over to the right. I'm doing that on purpose. And I'm actually kind of, to me, it was my way of teaching him a lesson that when an ambulance is behind you, you go to the right. And I wanted him to pull all the way to the right to get out of my way. And that's just, it's kind of a cocky douchebag move, if you will. But yeah, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> keep going. So it's a long drive. Uh, this is a normal response drive, though, for us sometimes. Again, here we've got traffic backing up. I'm banking. If you notice, I'm already starting to pull to that left side. I'm already thinking that this lane here is not going to move. It looks like it's backed up all the way to the next light. There's nowhere for them to go. They're probably not going to pull to the right. I'm looking ahead, and I'm seeing the people in this that I'm about to oppose. They're starting to pull over, which is good, and give me as much room as I can get. However, this truck right there stops. And I had high tone. I had like half an inch on either side, which to me is enough. Now, here's where I was talking. I, I, I This is why I kept my mouth shut a minute ago. Right here is another go, no go point. I could move over because, again, I should pass this van here to the right and then go behind him if I'm going to oppose. The issue that I have is, again, can't see behind the van. And if there's another vehicle there, what you can't really see yet on video, and you're going to see it in a minute, there's an island right here. And that island is going to prevent me from crossing back over. So if this, these people in front of me here don't stop, I'm screwed. And I won't be able to get out. I'll have to shut. I'll be forced to shut down, turn off my lights and sirens, and just wait for traffic to dissipate. Uh, in that instance, in this instance, what I'm about to do is I'm just going to oppose. I'm going to take this van on his passenger side, which is completely wrong, to be honest with you. Uh, Why did I do it? I made eye contact with the driver and I kind of make a bold turn, if you will, and just kind of show him that I'm going to be moving over to his right hand side. So that he stays put. That's kind of, that's my thinking. And that's what I was hoping was going to happen. Unfortunately, it worked out for me, but this is completely wrong. See that? I would have gotten hit with all this traffic right here. And there is coming up a center divider right there. You, you get a quick peek at it right there. And so I would have been locked in. I may not have been able to make that turn. And we're trying to get to where we need to go, obviously, quickly. Now, again, right here, this has to be less than 15 miles an hour. These people should have moved over to the right. They didn't, in which case I need to plan for that. And this should be creeping past them at a very, very slow rate. I should not be going probably more than five miles an hour. Because, again, if they hit me and I'm and I'm excessive speed, then it's my fault. And I'm, at, and I'm ultimately going to be charged with that accident. So... Uh, cruising relatively slow again more and more traffic now this is sketchy right here this bus right here is completely blocking our view there's the bus there's that white suv right there uh, it, and traffic may not hear me they may not see me and even if they do all of that they may not care and we need to be this is this approaching this was extremely sketchy because we can't see and people can't see us so let's see how we do Bus is holding, which, again, it's a catch-22. If the bus stays, I can't see. People can't see. But if the bus goes and he gets stuck, he's going to interrupt my flow. Uh, again, you're going to see what happens. To me, it works out. But keep an eye on this right side right here. You're going to see something happen that that I'm talking about. This van is just blocking us. Right? Hang on, hang on, hang on. So he's saying, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. That's telling me that that right side is not clear. He doesn't need to say not clear. I already know what he's talking about. And, 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 and again, this comes from experience, and this comes from his experience and my experience. We know that accidents happen all the time. And I knew by him not clearing me, I wasn't going to go. And so he's saying, hang on, hang on. And if you look right here, this car is going to slide right in front of me. And he actually locked up all four brakes, right? So now we're back into a groove. Uh, we've got some open traffic, which is good. That's going to be the end of that video. Uh, but 
That's what I'm talking about. And so these are the videos I want to make. But it, so as you can see, if you are not an EMT or first responder, paramedic, whatever, and you don't drive code three, please do us a favor. Make every effort you can to safely move to the right hand side. Uh, the reason I say that is because I don't want you doing dumb things and people do dumb things all the time. They stop right in the middle of the road. I've seen people literally go from right in front of me in this lane that you can see right here on the video. Uh, I went from, they went from that lane. They crossed all the way into oncoming traffic all the way up to the curb and actually bounced up the curb to get out of our way, which we weren't riding them. We were uh, not like I did in this video, right? Uh, but we were responding and, and we were being polite. We were being courteous. We were being careful. And this person took it upon themselves to literally just dart all the way across the oncoming traffic and hit the curb. So uh, not a good thing to do. Please safely pull to the right and slow down. The one thing I want to talk about was my driving. And this is something that I, I mentioned earlier. I said, I'll talk about my driving in a little bit with tones. So when we become EMTs, at least in the company I was at, the system I was at, we had to go through EVOC training, which a lot of people do, emergency vehicle operations, right? And what we learn is we learn how the vehicle handles. We get to like yank on the wheel and, and do this cone racetrack type thing and learn to back up and all this different stuff. And it teaches you just to handle it in emergency situations. And so the we have what we call field training officers. They actually, every driver is given a uh, it, it's like a key fob, we called it, and you would have to set it in motion, if you will, and basically you have to register yourself as a driver to that vehicle. Again, that road safety system will monitor your driving habits. And so you buzz in, and basically you, you, you almost like clocking in, right? They know you're the driver, and it records your driving. Well, FTOs do this when they uh, are driving sometimes at EVOC, and I don't know why they would do it. Oh, it's just to get the tones off because it beeps really loud if you don't. And they would tone in even when we were doing EVOC training. And so, like I said, each second of a high tone was a point against your driving. You had a one mile to drive to get off that one second. For nine months running in care, I was the worst driver. I was below the FTOs who were doing EVOC training and that thing tones all day long. And what does that mean? That means I have more points on my record for either too fast of an acceleration, too hard of a break, too hard of a corner, going too fast, what have you, for nine months running. And how do I know this? And people are going to go, oh, no, no. I, I promise you I was. So I applied to become a FTO, field training officer, and I didn't get a phone call. So I contacted the management who was in charge of that division and he said i pulled your driving record you were the worst in the company for nine months straight now a couple things about that first of all on the on the road safety it said i was the worst driver in the company however i never got in an accident while running code three not once I never hit anybody. I usually made my times more often than not. And for those of you who have driven that area or worked in that area, no, that's not an easy feat. And so I argued with them and said, look, I know how to drive and I know how to drive really well. It's just your safety system is so sensitive. I was blaming it on them that it can't handle my driving. And that's really what it came down to. And I'm not, again, not trying to float my boat, not trying to be cocky. It's just, I drove hard, but I drove smart. And they didn't like that. And so I couldn't actually get my FTO spot. And that, that ultimately ended my field career because really I was looking to, upgrade, to make more money. And so to do that, I had to go to dispatch. I know, dreaded dispatch, but whatever. Uh, it worked out in the, in the end, worked out better. But I was trained by a firefighter who, crazy driver. And we'll get, I've talked about him before, but maybe we'll talk about it again at a later time. Other than that, if you guys liked the video, please hit like, hit subscribe hit follow, hit the bell notification, whatever you got to do. I greatly appreciate it. Even if you don't hit bell notifications, even if you just subscribe, that way it just boosts us up in the uh, algorithm. And if you can just hit like, it does the same. And if you want to drop that comment that I asked about earlier, go for it. That'd be awesome. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you guys next time. Keep lounging.